Hi cuties, I hope that you guys are doing so well. So today I want to do some acrylic nails and I want to test if there's really a difference between a $2 acrylic brush that I found on Shein and the $32 acrylic brush that I bought on Amazon. Specifically, I'm going to be comparing my number 10 Kalinske brush from Panna. I got this one on Amazon for $32. At least that is the price that it is retailed for on Amazon at the moment that I'm filming this video. And then I also have this number 12 Kalinsky Germany brush from Shein, which was only $2.70, or at least that is what it is retailed at as of the time I am filming this video. So I have these two acrylic brushes, and today I really just want to see how each of them compare using them on the same hand at the same time. Well, not at the exact same time, but for the same set because when I didn't have any experience with a more expensive acrylic brush, I was always wondering if it really would make a super big difference. And I would just use these really cheap ones that I found on Shein, which is totally fine. But I wanna make this video to just like compare them once and for all for you guys, so that those of you who don't really have a lot of experience trying different acrylic brushes can maybe learn something that will help you from this video. So let's get into it. Let's get into the battle of the brushes. So first things first, I gotta get some tips on this hand and do a little bit of prep. So if you really just are here to see the acrylic brushes in action, then you can skip to this time or just use the chapters that I've put down below. But yeah, let's get these babies prepped. So I do have my protective rubber base gel on there and I'm just going to buff it really quick with my buffer so that it's all nice and rough and the acrylic adheres really well or as well as it can. You might have noticed that I took the set off that I did in my last video, the one with like the dragon stickers. I usually keep my sets on for like at least a week, but I was just really not a fan of those nails. I don't know why. I think probably the fact that they were so short did not help. So I'm just gonna be using some extra, extra long stiletto tips. So I'm just gonna size all of those out and prep them with my primer. And I'm only gonna be doing one hand today because I was considering doing two hands, one hand for each brush, but then I figured that one hand would inevitably have to be done with my non-dominant hand. And I wanted this like competition, if you will, to be as fair as possible. So I'm gonna be doing only one hand and using one brush for two fingers and then the other brush for the other two fingers and then like use maybe both of them for the thumb or something just because I want this to be as fair as possible so no one can say that I struggled more with one brush because I was using my Dawn dominant hand we've leveled out the playing field and then before we put the tips on I'm just going to go in with a little bit of this nail prep dehydrator I've had this rubber base gel on for a little over 24 hours so I just want to make sure there really is no moisture on them alrighty and then I'm just gonna put on these tips using my my nail glue gel as usual. I like using the Rosalind one because it's pretty thin. I like saving my thicker nail glue gels to put on my full cover tips because I find it's just so much easier to put on full cover tips with thicker ones. Okay, so I've got all of the tips on and fully cured for 60 seconds. But I'm actually just gonna take my little moling file. So cute, I love it so much. And I'm gonna file kind of like the edges of these tips a little bit very carefully. Carefully is the key word. Just gonna get out my handy dandy dust collector first. But yeah, these tips are really, really fragile and like flimsy because they're just like half cover tips. They're not meant to give your nail any strength. We're gonna add the strength with the acrylic. So I'm just gonna really carefully file the sides a little bit so that they're not as thick of nails. I want them to be a little skinnier and I just don't want them to rip or break. So I'm gonna do it carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then to try to get all of this like dusty, crusty filing dust off, I'm just gonna spray them with some isopropyl alcohol and then take my little nail scrubby brush and kind of just like try to scrub off any of the dust that is on top of them because I don't want dusty acrylic today. No thanks. So now there's a little bit of dust underneath, but we can deal with that later. Okay, so for these nails, I think I'm actually going to be using some of my own custom acrylic that I've made before. I really love this Airhead Bite color and this Sugar Plum color that I made, like when I made my spring custom acrylics. So I'm gonna be doing these two colors today. And I think the way I'll do it is I'll do the Airhead Bite color with my $32 brush. So my my Panna brush and I'll do anything with the sugar plum color with my Kalinsky brush from Shein that was only two dollars and seventy cents and then also if you noticed when you first opened the video or you probably saw in the thumbnail because more than likely these nails are in the thumbnail I want to do some Aurora today because I don't know I'm just feeling like putting some Aurora sheet in my nail I kind of miss it all right Let's get to it. Okay, so I've put down one of these little dental bib mat things because water does not go through them. So by using this, the monomer won't soak through onto my tabletop. I've really been liking these. And I think to start off, we will start with the budget acrylic brush. So the $2 one. And this is actually my first time using this one. So I'm just gonna wipe it off with some alcohol first to make sure that there's no like product on the bristle because I think sometimes when you get a new brush it can have like product on it and you're kind of supposed to clean it off, which I low key never did with my Panna one, but it's been working fine. So I don't really know. <laughs> and then I'm so excited about this. I found these like mason jars, which with this like latch, at home goods and I'm gonna be using these as my dap and dishes now because what I really love about it is that when I'm done I can just seal it airtight like that and then my whole entire room won't smell like monomer which is super convenient so I just poured a bunch of my Kira Sky EMA monomer in here and that is the monomer we are going to be using today so I'm just gonna get to my brush all nice and prepped in some of the monomer and then here's just like a little close up of what this brush looks like when it's got the monomer in it. All right, and then what I say, I said I was gonna use the sugar plum. So let's do that. And then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the sugar plum on these two nails and then the airhead bite on the other two. And we'll figure out something for the thumb whenever we get to it. So always when I do acrylic, I like to start by putting just like some monomer down. So I'm just gonna do that. And then both of these custom acrylics are glitter acrylics, which I thought would be good because I always use glitter acrylics. And also we are going to be doing encapsulation. So I figured glitter acrylics, encapsulation, a good variation of things to do with the acrylic brushes to test their performance, I guess. So I'm just gonna dab it in there like two times. There's the bead and we will put it down. I'm not really building structure with this custom glitter acrylic yet because I know I want to put the Aurora film in these and then encapsulate that as well. So I know that I'm going to have to do some encapsulating. So I'm gonna try to keep this glitter layer pretty thin. So right off the bat, I'm definitely not having any trouble. I mean, I have used this type of brush before, other sizes of it in such in the past. So I know that I can like create good work with these brushes. So I'm just gonna finish this nail off. I do notice that the brush kind of dries out pretty quickly and starts feeling a little like plasticky. So I feel like it would be really easy to gunk up this brush if you're a beginner and you're not used to like constantly wiping off your brush and dipping it back into the monomer. Also, when I am dipping the brush in the monomer, I'm like wiping my entire brush off like on the side of the jar before I dip it into the powder. And I will show you what I mean by that in a second. Okay. 
Okay, so there is that nail with the $2 brush. And let me show you what I was talking about when I said I was wiping my brush off on the edge of the jar. So when I'm dipping my brush in here, I'm like tapping it off and then I'm also wiping it off completely like that one time and then going and dipping it in. So now I think I'm just going to switch from this brush to my Pana brush for the next one because I want to kind of like alternate back and forth so I can really get a feeling for the differences between the two. And by the way, whenever you are leaving a brush to sit, you always want to make sure that is nice and moist. I'm sorry. I actually love the word moist. I don't know what people's problem with it is. Anyway, just make sure that your brush has got some monomer in it and it's looking nice and shiny before you let it sit for like minutes on end. You know what I'm saying? So that'll be over there while we use our Pana brush. And this one is the $32 brush. Oh, and also this one is a size 10. Normally I thought that the lower the number you go, the smaller the brush. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But this one that I had just used previously is a number 12 and it low key looks smaller to me. So yeah. I'm not quite sure about that. I think the number 12 Pana brush is bigger than this one, but this number 12 is smaller than the Pana number 10. Hopefully that made some sort of sense. <laughs> so I'm gonna start wiping my nails with the monomer first. And right off the bat, these bristles just seem like, first of all, like thicker and also softer, kind of less plasticky in a way. I mean, here's like a little close up of what they look like when they both are wet with monomer. I'm gonna crack open the Airhead Bite color and I'm gonna do the same thing where I dip it in the monomer and then wipe it off on the side and we're gonna just dip it in there twice. Right off the bat, I feel like that might be a little bit bigger of a bead, but yeah, let's just put her on. I'm kind of trying to keep the tops a bit flat because I'm going to put a piece of the Aurora film on there and I don't want the Aurora film to get too crinkly because the nail is super curved, if you know what I'm saying. This Pana brush definitely holds the liquid a little bit better in a sense that I feel like the bristles are kind of constantly a bit moist. So I'm not as afraid that it is going to start gunking up with acrylic because if the bristles get dry, the acrylic will gunk up on there and then you'll have to soak your brush and acetone and then after a while your brush will just be basically destroyed. Trust me, I know from experience. So I feel like having the bristles hold moisture really well and not dry out super fast is something that's really important to me at least. So there's our first acrylic with the Pana brush, the $32 brush. And this is how the brush is looking afterwards. Very nice and clean. But then again, this $2 brush is also looking pretty clean. So, so far so good. Just so far with the glitter acrylic, I feel like I was able to get a really good result with both of them. So, so far, so good. So now I'm gonna switch back to the $2 brush and back to the sugar plum color. And we're gonna do the sugar plum color on the pinky nail as well. Also, I know I'm definitely not a professional at acrylic or anything. I've been doing acrylic nails for almost a year now. I started 
started last summer and I've definitely had experience with a few different acrylic brushes. And the first time I used a Panda brush was only like a couple weeks ago. And it was like the first time I was using like a really sort of expensive acrylic brush. And I just had always wondered before I had tried it, like if it was worth it to buy the $30 acrylic brush or to just keep getting the cheaper ones and gunk them up and then buy more cheaper ones. So I'm just trying to make this video for you guys who are also maybe just DIY nail girlies trying to get into acrylic or doing acrylic and wondering if it is really worth it to invest more than like $5 into an acrylic brush because those things can get pricey. I find with this brush from Shein, I'm having to dip my brush back into the monomer at least like once, even when I'm just trying to like sculpt the bead on my nail. Whereas with the Panna brush, I really wasn't having to dip it back into the monomer until I was getting my next bead. And then that just goes back to the fact that this Shein one just seems to be drying out a little bit quicker. And this Shein brush really doesn't keep its shape very well unless it is like freshly dipped in the monomer. So that's another reason why I keep dipping it back in the monomer because it's a lot easier to sculpt the bead if the brush is like keeping its shape. All right, another one down. So I'm just gonna dip this one in my monomer so that it doesn't get super dry. Something that I am also noticing while I am doing this is that, sorry, there's like a crow yelling outside of my window and it won't stop, but <laughs> I'm really able to achieve the same effect with the Shein brush. It just kind of seems to me to be like more of a process sort of thing. Like the process with the Panna brush is in my opinion a lot more enjoyable than the process with the Shein brush. The Panna brush just seems to feel like nicer in my hand, easier to kind of hold, just like more enjoyable to use if you know what I'm saying. And I think that's kind of like what it comes down to sometimes with a lot of these nail products and tools where there's like a very large price difference. I feel like if you have your technique down, you can definitely achieve the same effect with the cheaper option. At the end of the day, it's kind of just like, does like the enjoyment of using the product matter to you? Or is it like worth it to enjoy using your brush a little bit more, but get the same nails and spend an extra $30? Like I just wanna show you after sculpting that last bead, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel probably like three times and I didn't dip it back into the monomer once, but it's looking still so moist and it doesn't look like it's getting gunked up at all. Whereas this one over here, if I wipe it off on my towel a couple times and start moving around acrylic, it starts looking super dry. Anyway, so there we have that. I actually think that looks so cool with like two blue, two pink. And I think for the thumb, I'm actually just going to like ombre the two. So I'm just gonna ombre from blue to pink. And I am going to stick to using the Shein brush for the pink color and the Panna brush for the blue color. So nothing is changing in that regard.
Okay, so I've got all the glitter acrylic applied, which is our first layer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wait for the glitter acrylic to set completely because this one is definitely not even close to set yet. And I'm gonna cut a few little strips, little pieces of this Aurora film, and I will be back to apply it. Okay, so these are all fully set now. Uh, one of the nice things about the weather warming up is that my acrylic now doesn't take eons. Is that even, is that a word? It just doesn't take forever to dry anymore or like set because when the weather is colder, acrylic takes longer to set. Anyway, um, I cut out all of the little pieces of the Aurora foil right here, which you can barely even see because it kind of just disappears into the black mat. But if you've never used this kind of foil before, it's so freaking hard to cut, especially if you have long nails on. And I was using this giant pair of crusty scissors, which honestly, I, I think it might be a little bit easier to use the longer pair because it's just like easier to create like straight lines. But anyway, I've got the Aurora foil all cut out and I decided to go with the same foil for all of the nails. So there it is. It's super pretty. It, it's like blue with a pinky peach reflect to it, which I think, you know, goes with these nails very well. So I'm going to put the foil on with some clear acrylic and I'm going to stick to like the same procedure of using the Panna brush for the blue ones and the Shein brush for the pink ones, except for this first one, the thumb, I'm just going to use the Panna brush because I'm not going to use like the Panna brush for one half and then the Shein brush for the other half. Like that's just too much work. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a pretty wet bead of acrylic and I'm going to put it over my whole nail or at least just like the top where I want the film to be sticking. And then before that sets up too much, I'm gonna try to pick up this film and just stick it on the nail and push it to where I want it to go. And I cut out the pieces kind of so that they would sit on top of the nail instead of like folding and curving over the entire nail because I feel like it'll just look a little better that way, hopefully. Hopefully it won't crinkle as much, although it definitely will crinkle a little bit. That's actually totally fine with me because I think the crinkling adds a little bit of dimension to the whole effect of the Aurora, if you know what I'm saying. Ooh, yes, I think these are gonna look really, really cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the same thing for all of the nails now, alternating between the brushes. Also, some of you guys were telling me in the last video that I did acrylic, which was a Nails and Chill video, that the Sauvaland acryl clear acrylic that I've been using might be a little cloudy, which is why I wasn't really able to get the nice icicle effect that I wanted. Besides the fact that I used a gel that was like way too thin, that could also be one of the reasons is what you guys told me. And I think that you guys might be right. Unfortunately, I actually have like this entire tub of this clear acrylic and then another one to use after this one is finished. So what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try to find a better clear acrylic to use just for like encapsulating and stuff when I want the clear to be super clear. And then I'll probably just use the Sauvaland acrylic that I have left in this like bulk clear acrylic containers for making custom acrylics and like just mixing acrylics because this Sauvaland clear acrylic is very affordable, I must say. It's like $16 for eight ounces, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, if you guys have a suggestion for a really good clear acrylic, definitely let me know.
So I've got all the Aurora sheets on there and I think it looks so cool. Although putting the Aurora sheets on there did kind of make it hard to tell the difference between which one is pink and like which one is blue. They kind of look very similar now. So maybe we'll have to do like blue charms on these ones and pink charms on these ones or something like that. But anyway, we're almost done. I just need to put a clear cap on these before I file them. So while I'm putting the clear cap on, I'm just going to like give you guys my final thoughts about what I think about the $32 brush versus the $2.70 brush. Uh, that way, if you're just here about the brushes, you can leave when I do the filing <laughs> or you could stick around and see what else I do for the nail art. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I kind of already said this before, but definitely the $32 brush is more enjoyable to work with. It just feels like more comfortable to hold in my hand at least. It's definitely very pretty just like looking at it aesthetically. <laughs> and the bristles do hold the moisture so, so much better. So I literally did not have any problem with it drying out or gunking up at all. And I think that's going to be very hard for you to gunk it up if you have any sort of experience with acrylic. However, I do think that the $2.70 brush is a perfectly fine brush to do acrylic nails with. Like I definitely did not have a problem sculpting out these nails and doing the nails that I did with the $2.70 brush from Shein. I actually would recommend that if you are just starting out with acrylic that you start off with a brush like this one from Shein that's only $2.70 because it is a good brush and you're definitely gonna be able to use it to create good nails. It's what I started out with and I was fine. And that way also, since you're learning, there's definitely gonna be a learning curve and you might gunk up the brush, you might ruin it, it might get, you might have have to throw it away eventually but that way you're throwing away a three dollar brush and not a 32 dollar brush if you know what i'm saying it says that it is real kalinsky so i'm not sure it might actually be it worked pretty well just not as well as the panna brush yeah so i'm not really sure about whether or not the one from shein is actually 100 kalinsky uh, i'm not really sure how to tell and i don't know if you can always 100 trust what they have as the descriptions on shein and Timu and AliExpress and stuff like that. So yeah, but anyway, my final thoughts are that if you're just starting with acrylic and you don't know if you're really gonna be into it that much, definitely start out with like this $3 brush. It works really well. If you gunk it up, if you ruin it, you can throw it away and not feel bad about throwing $30 in the trash. And then that way, if you start with the $3 one and you decide that you really like it, at that point, I would recommend just putting in the money to get the $32 one. I mean, on Amazon, it's $32 without any sort of discount. And I'm sure that there are discounts on Amazon for these panda brushes all the time. I think when I bought mine, it might've only been like 20, $8 or something because of a discount. I definitely keep an eye out for discounts. And then that way this brush is just gonna like make your acrylic experience more enjoyable. And I think that it will definitely last you a longer time. Otherwise, if you stick to getting the cheap ones, you might end up having to buy like 10 different cheap ones. And then at that point, you could have just been using one panna brush and having a fantastic time with it the whole time. So yeah, that's it for my rambling about the brushes. Hope that makes sense. Cool. <laughs> So now that we're done with the acrylic, I just want to show you guys like a close up of each of the brushes. So here's the brush from Shein. So here's the brush from Shein. It actually did end up getting a little tiny bit gunked up if you can tell. But yeah, I don't know if you can kind of tell. It's not too terrible, but there are some little pieces of acrylic that are kind of like dried on the bristles, which can easily be fixed by just like cleaning the brush off with some acetone. 
And then here is the Pana brush. This one, oh my gosh, feels so soft. Definitely no sort of acrylic stuff on the bristles at all. And I think I wiped this one off and dipped it in the monomer like way less than I did the other one just because I knew like in my head that it wasn't going to get gunked up as easily. I was totally expecting these to be super chunky and they totally are. So we definitely need to do a bunch of filing. But before I do that, I wanna clean up my acrylic stuff. And when I put my brushes away, I'm actually going to put a little drop of cuticle oil on them to keep the bristles nice and moist so that they don't dry out. And then that'll just help your brushes last even longer. Alrighty, so I'm gonna clean up this mess and then we're gonna do a bit of filing. I am really happy with the way these nails are turning out though, just because I've really missed really, really long stiletto glitter sparkles on my nails. Like, I don't know, I it's fun doing all the extra crazy stuff and sculpting things and trying new things, but at the end of the day, I really just love me an extra, extra long stiletto with lots of glitter and sparkles. It's really all I need in my life. So yeah, I'm really excited to have these, especially after I did those like short almond nails in my last video that I kind of hated and actually ended up taking them off less than a day after. I woke up in the morning, went to school, came back home and took them off just cause I couldn't look at them anymore cause I felt like they were so bad and they made me feel bad. <laughs> I'm really loving these. So here they be all filed up. Are they perfect? No, absolutely not. But who said they need to be perfect? Not me. I know that for a fact because my nails are never perfect. You know what, we're just gonna accept the fact that perfection is its not attainable, at least not for me. So we're gonna be happy with almost perfection. You know what I'm saying? Happy little accidents, you know? Anyway, I'm not done because I want to do, like I was saying, I wanna put like blue rhinestones on the blue side and pink rhinestones on the pink side to kind of like differentiate the sides a little bit more. And I think I'm gonna do that with these really pretty like hollow, um, like just acrylic rhinestones that I have. And I think that I'm gonna use this blue for the blue side and then this pink for the pink side or maybe this pink. I don't know, I'm not sure yet, but I want to make a heart like with the two sides connecting, you know? So that's what I'm gonna do. But first of all, I kind of low key forgot to buff half of my nails. So we're just gonna give all of them a wipe with some acetone because apparently wiping them with acetone smooths them out a lot. So we're just gonna try doing that to smooth out the surface from all the little scratches. And then for extra good measure to get rid of any dusties, crusties, we're gonna spray them with some ice purple alcohol. Oh my goodness, these look freaking epic. What? Oh my God, I need to finish these now. Okay, so then I'm gonna brush, brush, brush. This also helps get off any of the lint that got stuck from the nail wipe that I just used because even though it's lint free, it's not really lint free and there's always little strands that get stuck. So yeah. And since the alcohol always makes my nails look really cloudy, I'm gonna put on some acid free primer because primer always gets rid of the white marks. And I definitely kind of filed into some of like the Aurora sheets in some of these, but we're just gonna, like I said, happy little accidents. Happy little accidents. And to go even further with trying to smooth out these nails, I'm going to put one layer of base coat on all of them. And now we're really gonna be able to see the sparkle and shine start coming through. I definitely got plenty of air bubbles from the clear, but we're just gonna ignore that, okay? I don't know, I think it's just the, I honestly think it's the a clear acrylic brand that I'm using because I tried as hard as possible not to move around the clear acrylic very much, although I'm sure I probably did move it around very much, but still, I tried my best. Okay, like I said, I'm not a acrylic professional or anything like that, but you know, I, I don't think the bubbles are a deal breaker. I think it's fine. To be quite honest with you, I feel like these look freaking 
epic just like this. And I feel like if I do the, oh my goodness, my hands are shaking. I've had too much caffeine. If I do like the heart with the rhinestones, I might just mess it up and make it look really ugly. And I'm feeling like I should just leave it like this. I don't know, I don't know, it's really tricky. I feel like rhinestones would be a little too much. I'm almost feeling like if I made the heart out of like chain, it would look really cool. But you know what? I'm just gonna top coat these, okay? I'm gonna top coat them and take a couple cool little like end shots just in this camera. And then I'm gonna make my decision about what I wanna do from there. Alrighty, so this is what they look like without any rhinestones, hearts, what have you. And honestly, they look pretty epic. And I would be probably almost totally satisfied if I left them like this, but I just feel like I should do more or I want to do more, okay? We're gonna experiment, all right, so we're doing more. But I actually decided that instead of the rhinestone heart, I want to make it like a chain heart. So like half of the chain on this side and then half the chain on that side. And then also line the inside of the chain heart with these really cute little moonstone reflective rhinestones and probably like the really small ones. I think that'll look so cute. So we're gonna do that. Let's do that. Let's do that now. And I'm gonna be using this Annie's Rhinestone Glue Gel from Shein. I always look for it on Shein to link it, but I can never find it. And something weird happened to my Shein account where I can't see any of my past orders. Like whenever I go to see all of my orders, it just says like empty. So yeah, I don't know what happened, but here it is. So let's just do this real quick, shall we? I am so excited that it is almost summer break because there's just so many things I wanna do this summer without having to worry about school assignments. I feel like school assignments are always just like an extra burden on my heart and soul. <laughs> but I really wanna do a lot of nail videos, obviously. I wanna do more vlogs, I wanna do more live streams, I wanna do more hair videos. I just wanna do so many things and I think it's gonna be so fun. So I just have to get through this last like week and a half of huge papers and finals and I will be done. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath. So I am going to re-top coat the top of these, but first I'm just gonna quickly top coat the underbellies just because I think I really like these nails and I want them to look as nice and clean as possible. And I did go in underneath these with my primer before top coating them. Also it's funny because um, I just realized that my brother's graduation is tomorrow. So yay, that's fun. I'm gonna go to that. He never really, he doesn't talk very much. <laughs> So I just found out that it was tomorrow today. But yeah, I'll be going to his graduation with one hand of nails on. He goes to the same high school that I went to. So it'd be kind of funny if I like ran into my old teachers and I'm like, hey, I do nails. Here's one hand of nails. Woo. I would do the other hand tomorrow morning before his graduation, but I have a large project due tomorrow. So 
I cannot. And then going in with the last top coat on the top. I actually love how these nails turned out and I'm really glad that I just decided to do them up a little bit more because I don't know, it's just who I am. It just be who I be. Also, I like how jets decide to like pass over my house right as I start talking. It's fantastic, I love it. I'm trying really hard to like do nail sets that I'm like inspired to do, not just like nail sets that I feel like I have to do for some reason. So like, trust me, honestly, I wanted to do these ones up a little bit more. My mom told me that they looked really good just like without the rhinestones and stuff and that I could just like leave them and they would be perfect. But I was like, no, I feel like doing them up today. So I'm doing it. I just got to listen to that nail art intuition. You know what I'm saying? And then it will all be good. So here are the finished nails and oh my goodness, just look at that. Look at the reflection with the glitter. It's actually insane. It looks so much better now that it's like top coated and everything. You can't even tell that that Aurora is like a film in there. It just looks like it's magically appearing and disappearing and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. The heart wasn't a super amazing um, success, okay? I know it's kind of hard to see it unless I like hold it together like that and when I go like, actually, look at that. That's actually perfect. Okay, wait, that's actually kind of perfect. Never mind. That's epic. I'm actually obsessed with these nails, you guys. I love them so much. Anyway, I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If it wasn't helpful, I hope that it was at least entertaining. <laughs> this video is not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> I wish it was, but it's not. <laughs> anyway, cuties, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me a lot, and I really, really appreciate you guys. I love each and every one of you so very much. I hope that you are having the most amazing day, night, week, life. Sleep well if you're going to sleep, cutie. I will hopefully see you in my next one. Bye! Mwah.